many clubs should we be in slash how do clubs work? There is no right amount. You can't really say that there's a certain amount of clubs that you should be in. But as we kind of mentioned earlier, try not to overstretch yourself because there is a maximum that you cannot balance, especially with academics. USF has this really nice website called BullSync where you can look at all organizations that are available on campus. So even before you actually start attending, you can kind of figure out what clubs you want to join. It's kind of the same process as joining a club in high school, except most of them are much more lenient on attendance. You definitely don't have to attend every single club meeting because everybody has exams, everybody has classes. If most of the clubs at USF at least meet during like the evening slash night time, so between like 3 to like 8 p.m. is when most of them meet, is how do you balance school and extracurriculars? So definitely your schedule is something that is literally going to save you for college. So look at where your classes are and like when you have, I guess, your like extracurriculars or clubs. I would like plan it out. It is good to have like a general plan. So like also just making a to-do list is like sufficient as long as like you know how to manage your time kind of like if you're if you're the type of person who knows you're going to waste time, if you have any free time, then maybe go the schedule way. But if you're like good at staying on top of your work and stuff, there's no need to like plan out every single minute. But yeah, it just like you just have to know. You have to like reflect on yourself and your own uh, study work habits and figure out what's best for you. Yeah, there was one girl who messaged me specifically about Bulls Necro. You should join if this is you and you're watching it. Definitely come to tryouts. I don't know when they're going to be, but you should join. Um, so for like dance practices, because I know UF, I don't know if FSU has any like dance teams, but UF has like a million of them. And then USF has a couple. So for dance teams, most of the time, all the teams practice in the evenings or if some of them practice at like 6 a.m. in the morning. So definitely look at what fits your schedule. If you're interested in Necro, we practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., which is kind of late, but most of the time we don't really stay that long. But, you know, you kind of have to like figure out when you're going to have your classes because some classes do go late to like 8 or 9 p.m. Um, whether you want your like night off, whether you want to go to bed early, like stuff like that is really like determinant of what you do at night, I guess. Are frat parties bad? What is the party scene like? It depends on where you go. It also depends on who you know. Um, and it depends on what the pretense is. I will say don't go out on weekdays, especially if you're in like a really like extraneous, like hard major. Don't go out on weekdays. Don't do it. And also don't do anything you're not supposed to. So are frat parties worth it? If you like partying, sure, yes. It's a fun time. But just be careful. Be safe. How do I join the pre-med fraternity and is it good? The pre-med fraternity at USF is Phi DE, Phi Delta Epsilon, a co-ed fraternity. So it's girls and guys and they have like a different, I guess, rush process. They do recruit, well, I USF, they do recruitment, I don't know, both semesters. I don't know, Medi's in this pre-med, he, he was telling me oh, about it. A, B, Fred, B, Alpha, like. Epsilon, Delta. Yeah, that one, that one wants to be it. I don't, I don't remember the name, but he said good things about it, so I guess it's good, like, he's had a good experience with it. So it's, like, there's no point in, like, not going and seeing these, a lot of these, like, pre-med frats, pre-law, like, whatever, like, they have a lot of meetings in get a good feel for like who you're gonna be spending time with if you did join those frats or whatever. So it's like beneficial to go to those interest meetings. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. If you're interested in something in college, just go to the interest meeting. Like it's not gonna hurt you. How easy is it to make new connections? It just, it starts slow and then it comes all at once kind of. Like you're gonna start slow, start with like one or two. Just first day of class, sit down with someone and just be like, oh, hey, like, can I borrow a pencil? And then that opens a dialogue, just those simple things, especially if you have, like, social anxiety or things like that. I hate talking to new people sometimes. So just simple things, just like, hey, can I borrow a pencil? Opens, like, some things, and then just sitting next to them is really useful. I will say that I've heard that it is infinitely easier to make friends if you live in a dorm than if you do off campus or in an apartment and also find clubs that you're genuinely interested in because that is how you meet people that sh that share the same passions that you do 
So clubs are usually the main way that a lot of people make new connections and meet friends. I know a lot of colleges also host like weekly events, like USF has um, new student connections and then weekly they have a, a movie night or a game night or something like that. UF has a weekly thing that a lot of people go to, especially freshmen. So look for social events that occur on campus and try to attend as many as possible. Orientation is also very useful. The way that USF does it, you're put in a group with people that are supposed to be like different um, schools from yours, people who come from different areas or have different majors. So it's a really nice way to get to know people because you're stuck with them for two days. How clicky are people? I don't think people are clicky at USF at least. I, I haven't met anybody that's genuinely judgmental or isolating or exclusionist. So it's very open-minded. Everybody there is open-minded. FSU is the same way where it's very just like, oh yeah, if you go to FSU, I'm cool with you. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then it just the normal like societal, like, oh, these are my friends. These are, this is my friend group. And then if you're new to the friend group or if you're new talking to that person, you're not going to be instantly in the friend group. Like it just takes time to form those bonds. What else is there to do in Gainesville slash cool places to hang out? There's things to do. You just have to like make sure you're looking out for them. They have like really cute things all the time that going on downtown. I don't have a car so I can get to them, but that's a different story. <laughs> they're going on, they're happening, there's things to do. Also, like, they have like little shows at the Hippodrome, or they have like weekend activities at like the park downtown. Um, at night, there's like lots to do too. There's like midtown, downtown. FSU has our like res center where we have like they made a lake for us so we can go swimming there. They made like a rock wall for us that we can go on, a climbing thing that we can go on. Um, and then we're, it's all free unless you don't go to FSU and or don't have your ID, but you can go kayaking, canoeing, um, play volleyball or just hang out there and just see like what you're called. A lot of times colleges are gonna have like a recreation tab and then it's literally gonna tell you everything that you can get for free. And let me tell you, I've never been to the movie theaters in Tallahassee, but I've been to the free movie theaters at FSU billions of times. And I've seen Toy Story 4 there, like a bunch of things that I haven't seen. So just look that up and just see like what you can get for free before you have to spend money on it. Yeah, USF has USF Riverfront Park, which conveniently the Bull Runner, which is their bus system goes to. So like if you don't have a car, you can just always take like the transportation and they do like canoeing kayaking I think there's rock climbing they have like a bunch of stuff you just have to like look for it so common forms of transportation I'd say bus and walking if you're really Watch out for skateboarders and bicyclists they don't care that you're in their way <laughs> is is college fun I think college is fun it is very what you make of it. If you put, you get out of it what you put in. If you take it upon yourself to go to the effort of joining clubs, making friends, staying engaged in your classes, and genuinely enjoying what you do, of course it's going to be fun. Find any hobby that you want to do. Find a group of people that you're comfortable with. Find something that makes you feel happy about going there. But in general, yeah, I think college is fun. Finals week isn't fun. I will say there are going to be some times where you wish you would you would have just dropped out or not gone. Like mm -hmm. finals week sucks. But also, like a good piece of advice that I have like learned is like don't compare yourself to anybody. Because um, let's be honest, literally nobody is on the same track as you. You're going to have a lot more fun when you stop putting yourself in a race against everybody. It's just so much more fun when you're just like, you know what, I'm here and I made it here, I'm gonna have as much fun as I can, but I'm also gonna succeed in my own way. So when does USF online orientations open up? Like once you put your deposit down for USF, or I'm assuming any college, like once you put your deposit down, you can register for orientation immediately. I'm like 95% sure that's true, because I think once I put my deposit down, I also put my deposit down for orientation the same day. Um, mm -hmm. For USF specifically, you can go to the USF Office of Orientation website and they have like a thing for um, registration for fall 2020. Um, 
or you could do it through Oasis. They have like a tab that's like register for orientation or something. Um, but any questions, just go to the USF website because it has all the links. If you Google search what you're looking for, it'll probably show up. What websites, online resources, or forums are best to help with scheduling and getting to know the university environment? For specific classes and like which professor to take with that class, I think actually upperclassmen are your best bet. Like advisors don't really, not that they don't know, but they're not going to be so forthcoming with information. They're not going to be like, oh, you should take this professor instead of this one. So if you have like like past the point of what classes you need to take, once you get to that part where you choose like which professor you want to take it with, don't go to an advisor because they're not going to tell you not to take a specific professor. Ask people who've taken the course. Like that's, that's your best bet. Yeah. You can also take a look at sites like Rate My Professor, but again, take everything with a grain of salt. Some people are just unnecessarily <coughs> salty and rude because they got a poor grade on the assignment because they didn't put enough effort or they, the professor may not, may just not work with their personality. So read through all of the reviews, take everything with a grain of salt and make your decision. But at the end of the day, the professor is most likely not going to be make it or break it for your grade. It's most likely going to end up being the amount of effort you put in. Not always, but most of the time. Um, really good idea, which I wish I had known about before, at least when it came to picking which uh, professor I wanted to take a class with, um, see if you can find their syllabus online, like before, and see how much weight, like what their weighting scale and grading scale is. So like how much they weigh their exams, their homework, their quizzes, and what grade you'll get, like what is an A, because I've taken classes where you need at least like a 94 to have an A in the class, and I've taken classes where you need like an 85 to have an A in the class. So that, that's like, that makes a big difference too. So looking into that is like a good idea. FSU there's like I'm pretty sure every college is like a bunch of portals just for housing um, and getting to know the school. Um, I will say a really important thing at least for scheduling for me is that get up like a planner like an actual handwritten planner. Don't get one on your laptop even if like at least for me it helps if you write things down especially to remember them. Yeah, um, USF has like schedule planner, which is like where you plan your schedule and it's kind of like a weekly basis so you can see like what times each of your classes are. Um, I made the mistake for this semester and the first semester, uh, I've been taking only 8 a.m. classes. So it like, I mean, okay, so for me personally, because I commute to campus, I like getting there early because I get good parking. I don't have to suffer through parking and I'm done with my classes by 12 and then I can go home and like do whatever or like work or whatever my like thing is. But I would definitely say if you're not a morning person, at least try one 8 a.m. class because I know a lot of people say they don't like it, but I'm telling you 8 a.m.s are the ones that are like the most people show up to the class. Like that's the class that the most people are in for me for the whole day. Um, labs, if you have to take a lab, I would prefer to take it in the morning. Like take it in the morning because three hours of your life in the afternoon are the worst. Oh yeah, especially after you have all your classes and stuff. A three hour lab sucks. And yeah. if you're earlier and you have like one of the earlier lab times, the glassware is probably not gonna be as used. It's, you're gonna have more supplies and it's just gonna be easier. Um, Some resources that might be helpful for UF though. Um, Facebook definitely, just like all the other colleges. And GroupMe is really big here for some reason. I don't know why they prefer that over other apps, but yeah, GroupMe is like a godsend for basically all the classes. They have like a group chat. So we're like all helping each other out through whatever course. Um, yeah, I think that's it for UF. Yeah, they use GroupMe at USF too, which- Grubhub. Um, oh if yeah, If you wanna like Grubhub. skip lines. Grubhub is yeah. useful too, so you don't have to wait. In Especially line. during like lunchtime, like right if you order, like if you have like a class that ends at 12.15, if you order at 12.10 and then your class gets out, you get to walk past all those poor people in line and like grab your food and then just go eat. What is the best advice for pre-med? Don't try to fit any stereotypes or anything. There's no one way to get to med school, so definitely don't try to like check any boxes other than the literal class requirements for whatever med school you want to go to. Don't join clubs just because they, you think it'll look good on a resume because if you're not going to put anything into it, you're not going to get anything out. So you have to be interested in what you're doing. Just 
do what interests you. That's like the best thing you can do for yourself because then you'll find something you're really passionate about and that'll show in your med school applications. But if you're just like joining clubs and like doing things to look good, they can tell. So don't do that because it won't help you. So I think that's like basically the best advice. I think just find what you're interested in. You can go to the AAMC website and get like the specific classes you actually need for med school and like what's recommended. And then besides that, just like, I don't know, explore your options because most of the time you have space in your like number of credit hours you need to graduate to take classes outside of your major. So definitely take that as like an opportunity to take classes you're interested in, in either like a different major or like at a minor or like do something that's like different kind of like what you're interested in. So besides like your pre-med stuff you like are doing something that you're passionate about so you could talk about that like in your coursework in your application i would also say try to look for opportunities and experiences as early as possible and not even to necessarily get something on your resume but to explore what kind of field you'd be interested in the future so look for volunteering opportunities for shadowing opportunities for internships research usf is very nice in that it is its medical program is super strong and so is its pre-med track. And there are tons of hospitals all around the Tampa area. So the likelihood of you finding an internship, volunteering or shadowing, anything that you're interested in, it is very likely that you'll find something. So try to get started and look for those opportunities as soon as possible. Yeah, I know like at SF, oh, do you wanna, you can talk to her. <laughs> Um, I know at FSU, uh, we have a separate, so we have like our academic advisor and then we have a pre-med advisor. And for anyone who wants to go to FSU or anything, like I think it's really important that you meet with them like within your first semester, just because they'll make you an entire like schedule of like when you should take classes or like what you kind of want to do in pre-med. Um, they'll like talk to you about that and they'll give you like a schedule. And they also like will give you like lists and opportunities of like where to get those like volunteer um requirements and like where you can volunteer where you can like internships so, like I know currently right now I'm at TAS and Memorial Hospital for like this volunteership and they like will cycle me through like different like places so right now I'm in like the surgical care unit so like I figure out like what to do there and I kind of like get a like feel of like what they do and if I like what they do so I think it's really important that you get like those hands-on experiences so you like know what you want to do like within the future and like your career reach out to like your professors that you're taking classes for, like your science. It doesn't even have to be your science professors because most professors on campus do research, like at least at USF as like their side thing. So like most of your professors will either know someone or they might be doing research and they can like connect you and like essentially like hook you up with like research or like an internship with someone they know. So if you get like really friendly with your professor, you could just like finesse from them. I think yeah. So about internships, because I have a paid internship with Siemens, so, and I'm only, uh, this is my first year at USF, and so it's, like, not a common thing for first-year students to get an internship, so I would say that, like, for the most part, like, any sort of internship in general is all about making connections, like, anywhere. So at my last job, I was a lifeguard. And when I was lifeguarding, I met this guy who had a friend that worked at the company that I now work for, and he, like, referred me. And so that's how I found my job. So, like, I would say, in general, like, always keep your, like, mind open and always stay open to, like, new opportunities and, you know, always be like open to talking to new people and things because that's how you come across that like one in a million like opportunity and you know we're all out here just trying to make money and get through college right <laughs> and also genuinely think about different applications that you can do with it this kind of goes back to finding out if what kind of career is the right fit for you and to kind of explore what opportunities are there for you. Like Nikita is doing, Nikita is genuinely passionate about art and she actually loves art. And so she's working with like some kind of medicine and arts kind of program where she can combine both of her passions at the same time. So if you find, if you have a hobby that you genuinely enjoy, like dance or art or 
um, I don't even know. Like there are a lot of opportunities where you can combine those. So just keep an eye out for them. Okay. Um, it's also important to be involved your freshman year, but really focus on like solidifying your GPA because classes only get harder from here on and you want to do well in these classes because it helps later. Like if you have good grades, it's like a GPA boost later onward when you might encounter class where you may be getting A's and as easy as it could be. So you just like be involved, but don't like spread yourself thin. I, I know like a lot of them in high school were like in a lot of clubs and it was easy to be involved in everything because like academia was like kind of like so so like we could get by without like over like whelming ourselves with work but it's not really the same with college again like you, you only get how, how much you put in so don't like join 20,000 clubs just like focus on like one or two make sure you're doing well in like school first and then you'll learn like how you study and then you know your next year you can like get more in depth or join more clubs or like do a sport or something like that okay does anyone Okay, you can keep, I, I don't know if. <laughs> no, you said you're gonna do something separately from it anyway, so. What? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, so in terms of specifically for like the classes, again, rate my professor to get to know the teachers. Um, USF has a Facebook page as Prigna mentioned for each class. There's also a general USF Facebook page that you can get accepted into. USF has a bunch of different Instagram accounts. For your specific class, usually there's one where you can, they accept people. Um, you basically send in a few pictures of yourself and a bio of yourself, and you can get your name out there and you can look at other people who are also attending in the same year as you are, with the same graduation date as you. So like there was one for USF 2023 and a bunch of people submitted their photos and their bios. So that's a nice way to get to know everybody else. So if you see someone with the same major or the same interest, then you can direct message them or talk to them and interact with them. So that's a great way to get to know people. I think for USF, the best one to use is the USF Facebook page, because for whatever reason, a lot of people are always active on like the USF Facebook pages. So if you do, I think this goes for anything, like whether you need like a roommate or like housing or like classes. I know a lot of people will go on the page and be like, hey, I'm taking microeconomics. Does anyone have any like professor recommendations or like has anyone like taken the class with this professor, like what would you suggest kind of thing. What is your favorite thing about your university? That we're better than UF. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I'll say that my favorite thing is A, the free stuff. Colleges are, colleges give a lot of free stuff. They, cause like, free let's be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. And also FSU is very like, accepting and it's a really awesome and pretty school and you really think about it it's it's really fun um yeah okay so i agree yeah you is the top seven so there's that um it's people i think that goes for any college honestly it's like the people people you meet and like the opportunities you have favorite thing okay that's not the people that i've met um what i'm working <laughs> like with shans the arts and medicine what i'm doing there is like I like look forward to doing it every week. <clears throat> Definitely the free stuff because I know a lot last semester Pregnia and I would go to all of the free yeah, things. Yeah, we went to every single event. It's so fun. <laughs> and they're all super chill and it's like you could just walk in and like do stuff, talk to people and then be like, gotta go to class. <laughs> I think my one favorite thing is every semester I always go to the fourth floor of the MSC. Like after every class, we all just meet up and just chill there. And it's very nice. So I like doing that. And then we just like go get free food because there's always free food in the Marshall Center. I, yeah, I, I really like, honestly, I really like the classes because I have a nerd. Also <laughs> because it's they're really interesting. I'm finally learning, well, obviously because I've taken too many other classes, but I'm finally learning stuff about the like major that I'm interested in. I'm no longer taking all those stupid like random classes that I have to take. I really genuinely do enjoy the classes. I enjoy like the environment of learning. I also 
really, really love the independence. Like I get time away from a lot of people. I get space to organize my life the way that I want it. I get to make my own plan for my future. And the people there don't treat you as a child. They treat you as an independent adult that knows what you're doing. Because at that point, you're basically a few years away from living your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. Told my brothers one day we gon' make it. Make it. We just gotta grind for that paycheck. paycheck. Mama told me one day I'll be famous. famous. Remember when she used to say she hate this. Hey.